Hello and welcome to Control Systems Lectures. My name is Samuel John. I will be a lecturer for course 420S. Um, in this first video, I would like to give you an introduction to what control systems will entail and the things that you expect when you go through this lecture. And um, let's get started. C control systems are used for regulating inputs to achieve desired outputs with minimum or zero errors. And the basic working principle is therefore uh, uh, measuring an error signal and adjusting the system to reach a desired output irrespective of the external disturbances. So what are we going to be looking at? Control system involves developing models for systems. This could be electrical models, mechanical models, or even fluid or thermal models. And then we're going to do simulation. After you develop your model, you simulate them using hardware in the loop or software in the loop. This is hardware in the loop and this is software in the loop. Uh, then understand the dynamic uh, interactions of soft systems. Control systems also involves filtering out noise and noise here is referring to unwanted signals. And then it involves selecting and building sensors and actuators, uh, testing and implementation. This is what control systems involves. So what will we be doing? Uh, system modeling, we will model our systems. We will analyze them in the time domain and then we will do time response analysis. We will do stability criteria. We will look at steady state error analysis, root locus analysis, and then control system design via root locus. We will also look at PID control. So in this first lecture, I will just uh, give you an introduction to control system. So the learning outcomes for this first lecture is to explain what a control system is, give examples of control systems applications, explain the basic components of a control system, explain the control systems analysis and design objectives, and then explain the control systems design process. So what does a control system do? Predicting the future output of a system, that's what it does. So it predicts the output, uh, the future output of a system, ensures a system behaves in a certain desired way, Therefore, control system is a mechanism that alters the future state of a system. So it predicts the future states and it alters it to ensure that the desired output is what you get. Control system consists of processes and subsystems operating together to achieve a desired goal. And this desired goal is your output uh, with a certain performance level. So this is a control system in this very short schematic diagram uh, where you have your input or a stimulus and this is your desired response. So you set your desired response and it's like your command signal to the control system to say this is what I desire and then you have your output or response or actual response. So for example, if you desire, if this is a, con a temperature control and you desire to have uh, 25 degrees C or Celsius to be what the room or the, or the enclosure should be, that will be your desired response. Your actual temperature might be 24, might be 26, might be 25. But the control system's responsibility is to ensure that the output matches what you desire uh, as a response, as your desired response. So some examples of control systems in, in, involves like an elevator. So when you take an elevator or a lift, you go in and you, um, you choose the floor you want to go to. The control system's responsibility is to make sure that the elevator takes off smoothly without jacking you and then stopping at the floor you desire to be and the door or the floor of the elevator should level up with the floor of the building so that you don't trip off when you are leaving the elevator. That's what the control systems is supposed to do. Uh, then temperature control systems is if you have a desired control system within an enclosure, say a furnace 
or room or even a chemical process that must be maintained at a particular temperature the control system's responsibility is to maintain that temperature that it doesn't go too far away from the desired temperature uh, other examples include electric switching power regulator so um, examples of control system we have mechanical vibration isolators you have active or passive suspension systems these are used in earthquake prone zones or they are used in vehicles road vehicles robotics and machine tools this these are all applications areas of applications of control systems uh, control system has a broad range of applications both in engineering in the medical field in biological systems control systems is literally everywhere even in economics it is applied so what are the classification of control systems for this course there are broadly speaking two uh, uh, categories the open loop system and the closed loop system the closed loop system is referred to as the feedback control system and we'll be dealing with these two systems but um, we'll major more on the feedback control system so let's look at the basic components of a control system so you have a system here then you have your input signal or your desired input and you have an output so this system is an open loop system um, because you have an input and you have an output there is no relationship between the output and the input except that what except that your control system's responsibility is to just make sure that what comes out is not too far away from your desired uh, uh, input so let's take an example of an open loop system this is a washing machine so washing machine is an open loop system because when you put in your clothes and you set the timer what it does it, it does the various it goes through the cycle of getting the water and the soap and uh, washing cycles and rinsing cycles and then hopefully you have a clean cloth coming out so it's open loop because you your clean clothes here may or may not be clean there is no how the system will know whether what you're getting out here is exactly what you desire so washing machines work based on a preset time not based on the cleanliness of the clothes another example is a sprinkler system also works with a timer so the sprinkler system is set to come up at a certain time and to run for a certain period of time and then to switch off and you expect that you a soil around the sprinkler will get moist now the sprinkler works based on a preset time also so it's not based on the moisture around it for example if the sprinkler is supposed to come up around 6 uh, p.m and let's say it has rained from around 5 p.m to say up to 6 p.m um, if this sprinkler were a close look it will be able to detect the, the, the level the, the moisture uh, content and then not come on but in an open loop there is no way that the sprinkler can tell whether there is already moisture on the soil or not so that's why it's an open loop system now let's look at closed loop systems so if we want to convert our washing machine into a closed loop system what we will do is we have the timer quite all right but then we will have a mechanism that will measure whether the clothes are clean or not if the clothes are not clean we have a clean sensor that will then compare the desired cleanliness of our clothes with what we are getting and then comes up with an error and then this error signal will then trigger the controller which will then either increase the time or decrease the time until the clothes are clean this cycle will go on and on and once the clothes are clean and the error is either very very small or zero then the system will stop working this is now a closed loop system and that's how it works another example is if we want to convert our sprinkler system into a closed loop system then we need a moisture sensor to measure the moist 
texture of the surrounding of the sprinkler and the same thing will happen you measure the soil's moisture with the desired moisture and you have an error signal this error signal is what will um, get your controller to control the timer until you have the amount of moist that you want in the system another example is if you have a car you have your accelerator pedal and you have the car speed and let's say uh, the desired cruise speed is 80 kilometers per hour so you want to set a cruise speed uh, at 80 kilometers per hour and you desire that even if you're on an uphill you may have let's say you know in in real in in real in real life when you are driving a car and you, even though you want to achieve 80 kilometers per hour when you're on an uphill the speed might drop to 70 kilometers per hour and if you're on a downhill the speed might pick up and go up to 90 kilometers per hour now if you now have a cruise control what it will do is it will measure the speed of your car uh, using a speed sensor then it will compare the actual speed of your car with your desired cruise speed which is 80 kilometers and then the error signal will trigger the controller and the controller will either uh, press the uh, accelerator pedal which means to increase the speed or lift the accelerator pedal which means to decrease the speed until you remain at 80 kilometers per hour so that's how uh, the closed loop system works so there are advantages and disadvantages for both systems we start with the open loop systems so for the open loop systems the advantages is that it is simple in construction and easy to maintain it is less expensive than a corresponding closed loop system. Uh, there is no stability problem. So for, for the open loop system, it doesn't have any problem of stability. Um, the advantages continue. It is convenient when the output is difficult to measure. Like the two examples we've given, it's difficult to measure how clean your clothes are. And so the open loop system works very well uh, or when precise measurement is not economical to measure the moisture of, uh, of your garden might be a, a pretty much uh, uh, not something you want to be precise about so then you can use uh, an open loop system then the disadvantages for open loop system is that when there is a disturbance uh, and changes in calibration it causes errors and the output may be different from what is desired and to maintain the required quality in the output recalibration is always necessary from time to time now let's look at the advantages of a closed loop system it has a corrective action that occurs regardless of the source and type of disturbance uh, it requires little knowledge about the process for example a process model is not necessary and then it's versatile and robust conditions changes may have to retune controller so it, it when condition changes you may have to retune the controller but the controller is robust and it's versatile what are the disadvantages of course closed loop uh, control takes no corrective action until a deviation in the control variable occurs and then the control the closed loop control is incapable of correcting a deviation from set point at the time of its detection so it's it detects it and then the signal goes uh, to the control system before it is corrected theoretically it's not capable of achieving perfect control theoretically but very precise as precise as possible for frequent and severe disturbances process may not settle out so here we are uh, of a closed loop control system the first one is an open loop control system you have your input or reference input you have your controller then you have a disturbance one 
then you have a summing point here so this summing point is actually a comparator it compares the output from the controller and the disturbance and since the disturbance is an addition to whatever output is coming here that's why it has a plus sign then you have your process or the plant and then the process and the plant again at the output you have another disturbance and then you have your output or control variable this is an open loop system in the closed loop system you have your input or reference uh, input which is an input transducer um, which you set you set the desired output which is input transducer and then you have your error signal the error signal is the difference between the output so you have your output so if the output is temperature it needs to be changed to an electrical signal using a transducer and then it's compared to the signal that you desire and this gives us the error this error then moves the controller or uh, instigate the controller or actuates the controller and the controller also encounters some disturbances before it gets into the process of plant and then the output of the from the process also encounters disturbances and so you, you get your output will not be exactly with what you desire and so this cycle in the closed loop system continues until your output is as precise as you want it to be so this is just a, a drawing which you will get used to it because you will do a lot of this so for example this straight line is what you desire but you can have an output with a low gain where it comes very sluggishly and then achieves your desired output or it starts and then you have what we call an overshoot and then this is an output with a high gain so it goes an overshoot and then on the shoot and eventually it settles down uh, so you can see that the the job of the control system is to see how do i achieve this desired output and so these are two different ways with a low gain and high gain so there are six steps in control system design you have step one where you determine a physical system and the specifications from the requirements so a physical system could be a robot car uh, a furnace or a chemical process and then in step two you draw a functional block diagram um, to show the various components of the system and then in step three you transform the physical system into a schematic this is covered in chapters one of your textbook and then the next step which is step four is you use the schematic that you've developed in step three to obtain a block diagram a signal flow diagram or a state space representation now when you come up with a block diagram you you now have a system that you can analyze and this is covered in chapters 2 3 and 13 then step 5 is if you have multiple blocks you have to reduce them into a block diagram to a single block or a closed loop system this will be handled on the block diagram algebra in chapter 5 and also chapter 13 then in the next the last step is you analyze the des you analyze design and test to see that the requirements and specifications are met so you have steps one to six in uh, system control design steps and this last step is covered in chapters four and then also chapter six to twelve and chapters thirteen so this is um an introduction to what you should be expecting uh, in control systems thank you for listening and during the contact session I will explain uh, if you have questions